Welcome to the page. It's your boy, Urban Historian. Um, breaking down the gentleman Robert Cottrell's book. This is just a review for educational purposes. Um, this is a preview of the book on Google. Um, one thing I just kind of want to point out here is a lot of people try to argue with me. I mean, they create these debates um, like they... I mean, people should know I, I don't just bullshit. I don't be talking out my ass. If there's a topic that I have knowledge about, um, I speak on it. Um, if it's a topic I don't know shit about, you won't find me talking about it or acting like I'm some sort of expert of sorts. But this is, uh, as you'll see, slavery, race, and law. So basically, it says right there in those words that race... And slavery are a legal system, not a scientific or God-given one. Um, so basically what it does is break down legal terms and statuses of African Americans in the United States of America Corporation. And uh, the status of black in these parts, the Latin Americas. Um, so you'll, you'll know in, uh, America, United States of, we are African American, uh, because the reason being is, I mean, through logic, I guess, obviously we have no identity. So I think black people are searching for this identity and anything they can try to find pride in, they kind of stick to it like African because a bunch of black people in African and Africa, so it gives them some sense of national pride, but Africa, America is not a nation, okay? And if you can find Africa, America on the map, let me know. Because last time I checked, it was a continent, not a nation. Um, so basically, it's going into, uh, I mean, you'll see cast, casta y color. Obviously, a cast and color system, uh, which creates things like white privilege because you're you're in a caste and the highest caste of that system obviously enjoys the privileges of the caste um it doesn't obviously say that specifically um you'll see some information in here about Dred Scott case um Jim, Jim Crow white and colored so at one point anyone that wasn't white or north african uh, Moorish, um, was essentially colored, you know, natives and maybe even dark skinned Mexicanos. I was just kind of browsing and ran into this Mexican or Mexicana's page and she's down in Mexico. Like, you know, I don't know why you people are, you know, trying to call us African. We know where we're from. We're natives. Um, our people are oceanic. Um, my last video, obviously, I broke down Oceanic Negro and African Negro um, based on a document that was from the actual Smithsonian Institute that obviously they archive and, you know, omit from your history books. So as you'll see here, it's going into the population of the Dominican Republic is predominantly of African descent. Uh, minority of population is phenotypically white, and even the majority of that group probably has more African. So white people in the Dom Dominicana are more African. Hmm. Uh, but the Dominicans are still calling themselves Indios. Um, and not as Afro-Dominicans. That comes up there. So um, you'll see Indio Oscuro, Dark Indian, and Claro, Light Mulattoes again pops up. If you haven't seen the last video, check it out. Broad variety of Afro American experiences. Um, and I want to contrast, you know, so he wants to break down the experience of an Afro American, which, you know, we'll see is referring to native. And at one point in America, black people were called Afro Americans. Um, until they decided to reclassify system, which is what this book is talking about. So again, go pick it up. Um, 
Race based slavery was not unique. It had a part of the Atlantic world of European expansion since the 15th century. Um, so, you know, in 1619, in, in the United States of America, they brought the first African slaves, which I believe, you know, through the information I'm getting, were probably just deckhands, not real slaves. They were probably some Moors uh, who were not under this caste system because if they're North African, they're listed as white. Um, so there were 16 slaves. You can look that up, 1619. Uh, when when the British started to colonize uh, beforehand, 1619, you know, that's come, you know, almost 200 years of slavery in America, because although Columbus never set foot here, they began to colonize, you know, the southern regions um, where you see all these black people at in areas like Florida and, and Georgia, you know, Atlanta is literally, you know, more populated by black people, from what I understand, for obvious reasons. Um, so don't believe the hype. You know, millions of Africans are not documented coming over here when you'll see they could only ship 16 people over here at a time, basically, in 1619, because there was already a bunch of slaves here. Why would you need to cart a bunch of, you know, Africans over? I mean, what I kind of connected to is maybe some of these African people were actually the house Negroes because they knew the system. And um, we were out in the fields, uh, you know, the field ninja was a little bit more aggressive. This is why there was all kinds of revolts. So they needed someone to pacify these people their identity, you know, like you see black and right now you identify yourself as an African. So you think all black people are the same people and obviously you can uh, relate to that color, but not understanding you're not the same people. Um, so let's see. So as you'll see, it did talk about, you know, Afro-Americans being Indio. Talking about uh, American Revolution. Slavery had to be justified in racial terms, legal terms, and in a way that did not occur in the New World slave societies. To be sure, racism existed throughout the hemisphere and had always provided a rationale for why Africans and their descendants could be enslaved while Europeans and indigenous peoples of Americas could not. Uh, so some hijack as the homeboy for 432 to drop, you know what I'm saying? He likes to speak on, obviously, you know, you know what hijack means, um, stolen, just like history. Uh, so even this book, you got to kind of sift through language because it's, it's pointing things out, but and then you're talking about indigenous peoples of Americas could not be s slaves, but we know they were the first slaves. And it even says these Afro-Americans are Native Americans. In my last book um, or review, we talked about uh, a mulatto chief of an Indian tribe. Uh, they had been shipping around, you know, enslaving. Uh, there's the word mestizos again. So those children or children of those children would be defined as white or at least not as black or mulatto or some other readily identifiable Afro Argentine category says married and had children with the new immigrants. So once you, uh, integrated or had your blood purified and you became you know, Afro-Argentine. Um, this is a load of crap because even in this book, it says that white people <laughs> down there are more African too. Uh, so I suggest you get that. Uh, look, Afro, Afro, I mean, you hear terms like Afro-Asian, 
everywhere but America. It's Afro. So you've been hijacked. Um, uh, even like based on when they called you African American, the elder community was against that because they know that. I mean, if there is any tie to African Africa, it could go back, you know, to you know, hundreds to thousands of years ago when maybe black people did move through Africa. But you gotta understand. The cradle of civilization, even in the white scholar community, is the uh, Mesopotamia or Middle Eastern region. So everybody flooded out of those areas into Africa. Uh, I'll be going, you know, more into details about America, but this is going to be a, a, a journey to connect everything. So there is not one shadow of doubt because. This is a legal case, so we got to, you know, present it in a legal fashion and through legal terms. I'm going to break all that down to how we arrived to where we're at today and who we really are as people. Um, I'm going to kind of note in uh, one document I found um, that... uh, these people are generally known to have beards, but and even uh, in one document, it also states they found people of this nation to not have beards as well. So just keep that in mind for future dates. Um, I'm just going to go and scroll through. Afro-American populations were scarcely recognized. Too much attention devoted to Afro-American populations conflicted with long-standing national self-images. Images that, that said that the nations that were the heirs of the Spanish Empire were white nations, or at least very least. Synthesis of Spanish and indigenous heritage. Afro-Americans might be found in such nations, but for much of the 20th century, There were often a strong reluctance to acknowledge their presence or to seriously study their condition. Seriously, study your fucking condition. That's the problem. Black people don't study. I mean, even everybody doesn't study. They rely on, you know, external sources to tell them rather than seeking the information, which is why we're in the situation we're in now um, to where, you know, somebody can say stuff like fake news and everybody believes it without actually Getting into details, because if you understand journalism, it's all fake. Reporting is fake. It's it, You're just reporting a story. Um, it doesn't matter the truth of that content. Um, there was a situation where a kid was fired at um, by some off, uh, off-duty cop. This guy decides to show me some kind of Fox News link um, to say this kid threaten to shoot the guy. So they've already decided this kid is guilty because of some article they read on Fox News. But this hasn't even gone to trial yet. And that's that's detrimental to, you know, thought processes in society because in a free world, we're supposed to give them a, you know, a right to trial. And, you know, it was up to the state to provide the burden of evidence against that person to prove whether or not they're guilty. So why is it that we've decided as a jury of peers that they're guilty already based on some bullshit news story from a new syndication that has lawsuits against them for fake news as well? So if you look up that information, you will understand CNN is fake is Fox News. It's all bullshit. It's all a fucking game. Don't play it um, or you're just going to be lost in the sauce. Figure deal me. Um, let's see. Struggle for racial equality. Uh, let's see. Nations of Europe had lost their colonies, no longer spoke of the white man's burden, and remained chastened by their devastated encounter with scientific racism, the Holocaust administered by Third Reich. Uh, so, it's talking about Hitler. 
Uh, but see, Hitler knew science. And, you know, I, I'm not a fan of it. I am not, um, you know, promoting what he did. But he understood the nations and where his people came from and what was going on in his nation. Like, um, you know, the term ish, as you'll know, if you understand language and legal systems of law, it's it, it means halfway. I mean, not full. Um, if I'm, you know, black ish, then I'm not full black. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm Jewish, then you're not, you're not of Judah. Um, maybe you had some kind of racial integration, which is why Hitler was calling them Baltards. Uh, if I'm saying that right in German, it's bastards. Um, so you gotta understand there's nothing new under the sun. Um, at one point, you know, I've, I've journeyed throughout my life with, um, you know, identifying with some sort of creator. I'm not a religious man. Um, my parents were Jehovah's witnesses. Um, my father, you know, he didn't believe in Jesus. So I think he gravitated towards that. Um, because they, they, they are more old Testament than new Testament. There's no Jesus in, in, uh, uh, I guess the Jehovah Witness religion. Um, but, um, you know, just kind of gathering history has led me to believe in the Old Testament because, as you'll see, um, with quotes from that book like Nothing New Under the Sun and discovering there is nothing new under the sun that you understand this shit is not fake. Um, it's not a myth. Um, I mean, yesterday could be a myth if, if you, if you don't remember it, you know? So I think it's understanding or the best thing for us to do is trace history and that'll, that'll show you what the Bible was talking about. It's a book of prophecy. Um, so it's telling you literally what's going on around you. And if you start to observe these things along with history, and you'll begin to understand why we are a separate nation of people. So on that note, I'm going to end that video and get to the next one. Peace.